Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Synagogue Church and Parish. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet Michael Gabriel Mays, the um, servant of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you. We pray to you. We thank you, Father, for sending your spirit into the flesh over 2,000 years. Yeah, salvation, your salvation, Yeshua. And how he's El Shaddai. He's the, the priest of priests as Yeshua. And he's the king of kings as El Shaddai, your spirit. And and that your, your spirit, all Father God, which is Yeshua El Shaddai, should dwell in us. Amen. And so we thank you and praise you. Amen. All right. Today's sermon is called Healing the Brokenhearted, Restore. Healing the Brokenhearted, Restore. There's... There'll be two other uh, of this series. This is the first of the sermon series of Healing the Brokenhearted. Healing the Brokenhearted, Restore. And where we're going to go is to Hebrews. We Hebrews the coffee. The old joke that we all say. We all know we say it. But then, then, then the women folks get us on that, guys. Don't they? We should say, she brews the coffee. Okay, you get to brew it now. Okay, no, just kidding. But okay, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 13, 5 through 6. 5 through 6 of 13 of Hebrews. Keep your lives free from the love of money. It doesn't say you can't have money. It just says don't love it and don't think about it all the time. Because uh, what you think about, that's what you're that's uh, what you're growing into. But you don't want to think about money. You don't want to love money. You want to use it as a tool of many tools of the trade of the tool belt. The tool belt, the tool belt has many tools in it. You can't just use money as for everything. The tool belt has many things and functions in it, and any craftsman or person that uses a tool belt knows that you just can't hammer everything you're going to destroy things and that's what money is it's a hammer but you need the nail so the hammer can you know or you need all these other items you need vice grips you need all a phillip screwdriver you know the you need the screws and different things Everything and all the electronic items a lot of times that is needed in a tool bar as well. Um, so that's what it's saying. Don't don't focus your eggs in one place and then love it so mightily you forget about your family, your friends, and everybody else too. That's not good to do. God God will supply all your needs, it says, in the word of God. And we if we, we need to believe it. Keep your lives free from the love of money. Be satisfied with what you have. For Yah himself has said, I will never fail you or abandon you. Therefore, we say with confidence, we have to be confident in this. Yah is my helper. I will not be afraid. So we got to know that God is our helper, our father. And, and that goes along with the will of God, Yeshua, helping us, steer us on the fact that they're, they're our helper. And then the second lead, I will not be afraid, right? What can human beings do to me? Or to break it down, what can you, your honorary supervisor or, or wicked politician do to me? Nothing. We've got to answer that question, and the, the answer is, if you have God as your helper and the Spirit of God the Messiah is your helper and you've turned from fear and being afraid, then the, the answer is nobody. But if you don't have God and the Spirit of God, the, the Messiah is your helper and you're in a fear, then they can't help you because you're in fear. You, you, you went into exactly what the devil wanted you to get into. So... Man, you do have to be afraid because you're afraid. And you don't have God as your helper. So you've got to get God and God's spirit, Yeshua, the Messiah, as your helper. And, and let them take away that fear. And then you can say and answer this question, not then. Amen. 
Let's continue. And so God wants to heal the brokenhearted. He's always and always will be the standard of that. And he wants to he, uh, restore us. That's the first part is the restoring. And Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel. Let's go to Zeke. You know, I don't know if he liked a nickname. I'm sure they had nicknames, even in those days. Uh, Ezekiel and Hebrew of 36, 24 through 32. 24 through 32 of chapter 36 of Ezekiel. All right. And it says, For I will take you from among the nations. That means if, if God takes you from among the nation, he's, he's doing something new with you. Born again, spirit-filled, amen. Rather you from all the countries, return you to your own soil, the original state that Adam and Eve before the fall, amen. And that's through the cross that was possible. Yeshua. And then I will sprinkle clean water on you. That's a form of baptism. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. God says you'll be clean when he, when he does that. That symbolicness of, of, of baptism, uh, uh, confessing um, God's grace on you and, and going forth in righteousness. And you will be clean. I will clean, cleanse you from all your uncleanness. Amen. And from all the idols. And I will forgive you. And I will give you a new heart. See, it's talking about the born again estate. It's talking about being spirit filled here. And it's talking about a, a, a new direction that God wants us to go. The original direction before the fall of Adam and Eve. And actually having the Spirit of God in our life through the tree of life instead of eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Satan's nature, taking on the nature of Yeshua. Amen. And it's talking about these things. And put a new spirit inside you. And I will take the stony heart of, out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit inside of you. That's Yeshua. He, Father God wants to put his spirit, Yeshua, El Shaddai, in you and cause you to live by my laws. And what caused you to live by, you notice, it will cause you to live by his laws, the Torah, the, the good teachings throughout the Bible. When you have the spirit of God in you, then it will cause you to live by God's laws. It's the will of God, Yeshua, the Spirit of God, the Messiah, that, that brings us to living by the, the, the laws of God. Respect my rulings and obey them. Now he's coming as a father here. Just like a father says about their son or the daughter that's, that's not being nice to the mother or you know, Henri, like they get when they get teenagers, I'm sorry, but they do. Remember, you were a teenager once. You can maybe glean from, it's kind of hard when you get older, but you got to think real good about those things too. And this is what he's saying, respect my ruins and obey them. Think of a father saying to their kids, respect my ruins and obey them, child, or the woman, you know, the, 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 the mother. You know, they disrespect the father. The father's at work and they're, they're you know, you need women, you know. Sometimes the women can get a little huffy. So you got to, you know, remember you're the mother, the nurturer too of the children. So sometimes you can get irritated, you know. But, you know, that's what he's doing. He's coming as a father right there. Respect my ruins and obey them. You will live in the land, and I gave to your ancestors. Do you notice it goes from obey so I can bless you, kid, kids, you know? That's what he's saying here. Yeah, like any dad, they get a little irritated. They were, they were thinking maybe to get Taco Bell or, or uh, McDonald's for the children and the, the wifey. 
you know, and then they go home and they find, that, you know, these things are happening. And that's what, that's what he's doing here. Respect my ruins and obey them, and you will live in the land that I gave to your ancestors. That, that's, he's, he's given that spiritual Taco Bell to, 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 the, to them, you know. That's what he's doing there, in a sense, you know. You will be my people. You know, it's like you say, you're my kid. Come over here, you little rascal. Or, you know, the, you know, the mother said, come over here, you know. Um, you are my people, and I will be your God. He said, you know, you said, you're, you're my son, and I'm your father. You're, you're my daughter, and I'm your mother. You know, that kind of thing. And I will save you from all your uncleanness. This is where El Shaddai comes in. And he's saying, I will save you from all your uncleanness. Yeshua El Shaddai is coming in there right now. After the father saying that, he's coming in there now. And I say, I save you from all your uncleanness. And I will summon the grain and, and increase it. You hear that, farmers? And I will summon the grain and increase it, even though it looks pretty bad right now, and not send famine against you. And I will multiply the yield of your fruit from your trees. I will increase the produce of your fields so that you never again suffer to reproach from, from you know, the people in the capitals. A famine among the nations. And then you will remember your evil ways, and you'll and you act that the actions that you were did was not good. So God has to show us and remind us where we came from sometimes, so that we can go forward in victory and not go and defeat back into slavery, into the slavery of 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 sin, of fear, and all those things. As you look at yourself, you will love yourself. That means what you were like. And that's good. You, you want to go on to greater things, not backwards. For your guilty and disgusting practices, understand, says Yah Elohim, Yah of the heavy, uh, the, the, uh, the creator of all things, that I am not going doing this for your sake, Instead, be ashamed, dismayed for your ways, O house of Israel. House of Israel is different than the house of Judah. That's everybody that was spread it out and went everywhere and mingled with everything that's out there. You know, that's pretty much everybody, really, because they went everywhere. The sons of their sons went places, you know, all over the earth. And, and you can't tell apart, but at the last days, God is... Restore, restoring us and showing what where you belong, the really where you belong, you know, not this what was put on you of that region, but actually who you really are. He's revealing those things in the last days. But there is a scripture that Judah would be the primary, which it has been, as you know, but the rest of the tribes of Israel, and then I would also put a plus on there because Levi, the tribe I'm part of, we're different. We're set apart for God. So there's 12 plus 1, which would be uh, Levi. And then the standard out, because in the last days he says that he, he would make uh, Ishmael a blessing in the earth. It says it. I believe it. That means there's going to be a lot of salvation, a lot of healing, and, and, and men and women's hearts they are from Ishmael. There's 12 tribes of Ishmael. And he says in the last days that be a blessing. That means they're coming to the understanding of, of, of the true God of the universe, yeah. And, the, and that his spirit came, died on the cross in a physical flesh. And he was always God's spirit, amen, from day one. It just, and they planned to do that from the beginning in Genesis. You can see the, the, that was part of the language of that. Um, amen. So they will be a blessing. They will be re restored. Because really, um, 
there's only a couple brotherly things that Ishmael did with Isaac, really. And um, they're brothers, and brothers do what brothers do, you know? You got one older, one younger. You tell me that they're not going to have some spats, okay? And that's what's going on there. So the most part, he, you know, he was a good lad that grew up, Ishmael, just like Isaac, and you know, and he's older, and He's going to pick a little on the younger and, you know, he's learning learning curve and all that. And you can see that in the Bible. And, um, you know, the sons forgot about Abraham's teaching down the line. And, and they went into other things, as you know, today. You know, and then, of course, you got Esau, which Esau is really just as much Jewish as Jacob. But that, what they did was really hurtful to the Father. But their salvation is a, it's for everybody. Amen. Even Esauites. There are quite a few different areas. I could, I could show you exactly where they are and everything. But we don't, we're, we're not doing a, a history of the world right now. But I'm, I'm just showing you the basis of things. That God is in the restoration of healing the brokenhearted in this world. Amen. So let's continue by going to Psalms now, 103, 1 through 5, 1 through 5 of 103, chapter of Psalms. So this is why it's not good to um, condemn a people that's from somewhere different than you. And just because there's some rotten eggs doesn't mean they're all the same. And even if they were, they, you know what? They, their heart changes and their mind changes to reality. And out of that, they're a different person, aren't they? So that's why forgiveness is a very important thing to have in this world. And it can be very hard when you've got a tyrant in certain other countries that are certain people in that. They're doing those things. It's hard to, to have um, forgiveness for them are are you harbor irritation for them but remember it's not the people most of the time it's the nations that are the problem because if you do not keep in check your nation your nation will destroy the people if you, the people don't take command over their nations your nations will destroy you just like it's happening all around the world it's the hiccups and burps of the people not taking control and love, a loving matter, not doing the same thing they're doing. And a better matter of sitting down, talking things out and saying, now we're going to throw this garbage away and we're going to start fresh as a people or as a neighborly nation or whatever. But that can be kind of hard, but you got to do it. You gotta, this is where maturity comes in that the world needs to have. Restoration. Maturity and restoration has to take a place in humanity or we're going to just, you know, the nations of the world are going to blow each other up. The people are going to, poor people all around the world are going to get the blunt in of the people on the top, what they're doing. So the people have to mature and they got to get restored in their, in their broken hearts and minds. God wants to do it. Let them do it. Let the Spirit of God in. Bless you. Bless Yah, my soul. Everything in me, bless His holy name. That's Hashem. Mix up the word Hashem as the holy name, His holy name. Bless Yah, my soul, and forget not His benefits. We got benefits with the Father God. And that nice benefits, you know, benefits are nice. And definitely says we have benefits. And he forgives all our offenses. See, if, 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 if the Father God can forgive our offenses, and he's the Father, he's the God of, of all creation, and Yeshua forgives us and paid a price on the cross for us, then why can't we forgive each other? Our offenses when they are on the top of nothing more top than them and they can do that we should take their strength on us 
to, to forgive one another on all these nations and all these different things that are going on. And he heals all our diseases. God says he heals all our diseases, including the, the character stuff that we don't even want to say. It's a swear word anymore, as we all know. We know what we're talking, you know. He heals all diseases. He says he it doesn't say, I heal all diseases except the, the CV thing, 19. No, he heals all the diseases. He redeems your life from the pit, the pit that, you know, the, the people put you in on the top. God redeems our life from thinking drear, being in a dreary area of, 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 of missing ourselves. God redeems us from that. He surrounds you with grace and compassion. And there's a lot of grace and compassion he has. So grab a hold of some. Go, go to, go to Yah Mark today. Where, and go to the eye of Yeshua of uh, compassion and grace and grab a bunch of it today. And he contains you with the good and long as you live. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. He, want, he renews our youth like the eagles. Boy, those young kids when they're going all over the darn place. That's, what, that's the youth we want, right? We want to have some energy like they do. But it says in the word of God, it says that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So you're going to think of a youth eagle and how they are boisterous as a young eagle and how they go forth and they do all kinds of stuff, pretty much like human kids do. You know, they just use an elegy of a youth eagle. But, um, and you know, a youth eagle will fly real high too once they get knowing how to fly as a bird they go real high and they're not afraid of anything you know and that's going back to where Yeshua says unless you come as a little child and uh, meaning that we have that innocence of that childhood of this believe the father can do anything for us Yeshua that's what we got to believe we got to believe they can do anything and everything for us and, and if we got to get to that area of a belief, the belief that they can do it for us because they will. They say in the word of God many times these things. Amen. So let's go now to Isaiah, Yeshua, 41, 8 through 14, 8 through 14 of chapter 41 of Isaiah. Let's head over there, my friends. All right. And it says, but you, O Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendants of Abraham, my friends, servant, chosen, and friend. Amen. I have taken you from the ends of the earth, summoned from the ends of the earth, that means everywhere on the earth, summoned you from the, the most distant paths, and said to you, you are my servant, and I have chosen you, not rejected you. Do not be afraid. What's the Father saying right here? Do not be afraid. So what are we going to do? Not be afraid. For I am with you. Don't be distressed. For I am your God. And I have given you strength. I have given you help. This is where Yeshua cuts in there, El Shaddai, and says, I have given you strength. I have given you help. I supported you with my victorious right hand. See, right hand. Anytime it says right hand, that's Yeshua. That's El Shaddai Yeshua. Right hand of God. You got you to gotta work the scripture over there and over there. Understanding from here, over, understanding over here. Then you understand when it comes about these different uh, phrases in scripture, you'll understand what it's saying there. I supported you with my victorious right hand, Yeshua El Shaddai. And all those who were angry with you will be disgraced. So all these politicians that are being weird and naughty will be all be disgraced. Put to shame for how they acted with all of us. Amen. 
And who will fight against you? Who will be dis destroyed, brought to nothing? You who seek the them but will not find them. So if they go too far, you go too far, Paul, just, you're going to utterly destroy your own selves with what you're doing. Because what you do, remember there's four fingers pointing back at you, you, you characters. And those who contend with you, yes, those who made war with you, will be brought to nothing, nothing at all. For I am Yah, your God, say to you, as I hold your right hand, see the right hand is the authority of power, okay? Amen. And he's, he's, he's saying, I'm holding you. Amen. Your right hand. Have no fear. When it says have no fear and you're still in fear, that's on you. God says, stop the fear. Stop going into slavery. Fear brings you to slavery. And, and then guess what? You're a slave to whatever they want you to do through fear, through envy, through division. Through not understanding the uniqueness each of us are, and you and you try to you try to throw commonness on your fellow brothers and sisters. That's not righteous, and it's not good. And you need to repent if you're doing those things too. Have no fear. I will help you. Sounds like Mighty Mouse rule. Have no fear. I will be with you. That's Yeshua saying that to us. Or else should I? You got to know when one cuts in, one comes out, and one cuts back in. The Spirit of God is talking, or is it God or Father talking? You know? Have no fear, Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, says Yah. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. The Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. This is why Yeshua says he was with them from the beginning. You know, as the Spirit, but also he says that he's with them in Israel, like he was there already. Because it was the Spirit, but this is, goes along with that, scriptures and the New Testament, the newer testimonies. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. How more plain do you need than that? To minister to people that need to understand about those things. Amen. So God wants to heal your broken heart, restore. Amen. Let's go to Second Timothy, Bet uh, Timos, chapter one, six through ten, six to ten of one, Second Timothy. Amen. 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 Okay. For this reason, I am reminding you to fan the flame. Of Yah's gifts, which you receive through the Shekinah from me. That's Yeshua, the Shekinah, the, the presence of God. For God gave us a spirit who produces not timidly, it's capitalized, that's Yeshua. Amen. So, for Yah gave us the spirit of Yeshua who produces not timidly, but power, love, and a sound discipline. Amen. So don't be ashamed of bearing the testimonies to our Yah or to, to Yeshua, Hamashiach, his prisoners, on the account of accepting the share and suffering and disgrace for the sake of the good news. God will give you strength for it, since our deeds, but because of his own purpose and grace. Because the purpose and grace that Yeshua, HaMashiach, or El Shaddai, has given us, the purpose and grace, which he has, which Yeshua, the Messiah, gave to us, who are united with the Messiah, Yeshua. And he, and he, Yeshua El Shaddai did this before the beginning of time, because he's the Spirit of God, but made it public only now, because of the flesh he took on temporary. Amen. 
publicly only through the appearance of our deliverer, Yesha, second uh, meaning of Yahshua, Yesha, deliverance, the, the Mashiach, Yeshua, who abolished death and through the good news we, we received life and immortality in the future. Amen. Praise the Father. So God wants to heal your broken hearts out there. And that's the minds too. And he wants to restore us. Amen. All right, let's go to Psalms, to Tehillim, 34, 17 through seven, uh, 19, 17 through 19 of chapter 34 of Psalms. Let's head over there. All right. All right. And it says, the righteous cries out, and Yahweh hears, and he, and he saves them from all their trouble. Yahshua, the salvation. You see it? Yah and salvation there. From all their troubles. And Yah hears them with their broken hearts. He saves them. Yahshua. Those Spirit is crushed. The righteous person suffers many evils, but Yah re re rescues them from all of them. But Yah's salvation rescues them from everything, Yeshua. And He protects all their bones. Not one of them gets broken, even though He suffered that on the cross. But he's saying with us, no. Evil will kill, the evil will kill the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. But Yah redeems his servants. No one who takes refuge in him, that's Yahshua, Yeshua, Yah's salvation, will be condemned. Or El Shaddai, amen. Now, let's continue this, this really well, the scriptures of ministry to us today, like it should. And when there's questions, we need to answer it, honestly. And if, if we answer it a little off, that's fine. We just take a look at it and the wording of, of what it's saying and say, okay, now I get it. And then you can answer it correctly. And then you can apply that in your life. That's, that's how you do things in Scripture. Amen. You interact with it. Amen. you got to interact with the Word of God. Psalms Tehillim 23, 1 through 6. 1 through 6 of 23 of Psalms. A lot of the, my fellow ministers, you got to remind the people of those things. It's important. I know there's a lot to hit on, but you got to remind them of that. you got to interact with the Word of God. You're going to have that Spirit of God in you, Yeshua, El Shaddai, and, and thanking the Father for all these things as you do these things. Amen. And be blessed in the maturity and the peace and, and the wholeness that God is doing in you every day. All right. Yah is my shepherd. I lack nothing. It says, I lack. I don't lack nothing but except COVID-19. No, uh -uh. I lack nothing. You don't lack nothing because Yah is my shepherd. I lack nothing. And then it goes, it says, He, that's Yeshua, Shaddai has set, has me laid down in green pastures. Amen. The Spirit of God, the Messiah, has us laid down in green pastures. Yeshua Shaddai leads me in quiet waters. Yeshua Shaddai restores my inner person. That's your spirit. And, I, and it takes in your soul too. There. It's the inner person. And, he, and Yeshua Shaddai guides me in the right path for the sake of his own name. Yeah. Even if I pass through the depth of dark ravine, 
I will fear no distress for Yeshua Shaddai is, is with me. Your rod and your staff rescue me. Because he's the shepherd, right? Amen. You you prepare, Yeshua Shaddai prepares a table for me, even as my enemies watch, even though the wicked politicians watch. You anoint my head with oil from overflowing cup. Goodness and grace. There, there's the goodness and grace going on. Well, well, the will of God, Yeshua, pursue me. Every day of my life. That means every day of your life. That's what it says. Every day of your life. Day and end. Sunday through Saturday. 365 days of the year. If that's what we still have on where we circle around the planet that we are on, around the sun, it will be, amen. And I will live in the house of Yah for years and years to come. That means forever. Amen. So let's take that to heart, that they both love us. God and God's Spirit, that is the Messiah, Yeshua, El Shaddai. Amen. And the Father God, Yah, loves us. Together, the Yahweh. And Yahweh means majesty. And Yahahat. Yaha means the power connected to all things. That's the Father. He's the creative, creative Father. Vahat, which is V or W, either way is fine. It distinguishes either way. Vaha. Uh, the light source, and that's Yeshua. He's the light of the world. He's a light source, and then together it's Yahweh, the Majesty. Their Majesty, their the Majesty of Heaven. Amen. Let's go to First Peter. I love Kepha, chapter five, six and seven, six and seven of five, the chapter of First Peter. Let's head over there. Okay. It's actually okay, there we go. Hmm. Maybe that was six. Let me see. Let me look at that real quick. Okay. First Peter. That's not a whole thought there. Um this okay. This this go for. Um, let me get that again real quick. I'm sorry. Uh, five. Yeah, it was actually Second Peter, not First Peter. Second Peter chapter five. First, yeah, check. Second Peter chapter. Oh, it's chapter five. Okay. Oh, we we bookmarked at the wrong area. Yeah, there we go. I just bookmarked in the wrong area. Okay, now we got it. Yes, First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of Yah, so that at the time, right time, he may lift you up. At the right time, he's going to lift you up. It's, you know, that goes along with uh, Job chapter, uh, I think it's, let's see, chapter 8 of, Five through seven, something like that, and it goes along with that scripture as well, where you start with the, a little bit, and he, and you're faithful in that, and he helps you into greater things as you go along, and that's what it's saying there. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of Yah, so that at the right time, Yeshua should I may lift you up. There you go. Throw all your anxieties, throw all your anxieties on, upon Yah Yeshua because He cares for you. He cares for you. He, so you throw all the anxieties and cares onto the cross. He, he died for those anxieties and cares to go away from you. And, and sickness and diseases and everything and the trouble that these pick squeaks on top cause that 
that will be dealt with soon. Amen. So he's he's come to heal the brokenhearted, res, restore. He wants to restore us. These pick squeaks and what they've done for the last 80 years to humanity and kill, steal, and destroy in the last, especially the last uh, four of it, close to three, but we'll say four years of it, of what we've been living through. Um, but the last 80 years altogether. I mean, God showed signs above, it says, you know, and he, he did show signs that th these things would happen. You know, three and a half years of bad, I mean good, and three and a half years of bad that we're in, and together that's seven years, okay? Three and a half years of good. The old timers were right, okay, about, about this. Because they always said the, the first part would be more of the good part, but you got to be careful and because you can get fooled. And then the other half of it, the other three and a half years is the bad that we're in, okay? But then it says in the Word of God, I'm going to throw it, this in, and Matthew and you know the gospel says that he shortens the time. And so therefore, the three and a half years that you bonifully know is not that way because he shortened it, but it doesn't say how short that is. Okay. And then there's a little bit of after effect of both pulls of both ways, too. You gotta put in there. But that's where we're at. Um but God has come to heal the brokenhearted, restore. He wants to put restoration in you. Do you have the will of God in you? you and you, you might be born again, but do you have? Are you born? Are you spirit filled too? You got to be born again and spirit filled with Yeshua. Amen. Are you? You, you know. So some of you are born again, but you're not spirit filled with Yeshua. You got to get spirit filled. So you need to pray and ask. That God's Spirit, Yeshua, go in there, the Messiah, and guide you. He's the will of God. And you cannot understand the ways of God unless you have the will of God helping you understand the ways of God. Do you understand? That's very plain, very good of understanding to understand. Amen. So, and some of you are not born again and spirit filled yet. So you, you need to get that both connected together and right. Right on. So basically, you nail all those problems on the cross, like the old timers, which are right again. You can find you'll find out that the ones from a long time ago are pretty much right compared to the ones of today. And traditions of today that are in the church and synagogue parish. You'll find the ones from 80 years ago and sometimes older, what they said that you don't take into account for these days are pretty pretty right on. We need to maybe repent a little bit more church on that in synagogue and parish and start looking to those things a little bit better. But the spirit of life, the Messiah Yeshua, the will of God shows us the ways of the Father. That's what he had all along for Adam and Eve. But they got tricked by the trickster himself the one, the one that makes Loki look like a nice fella, Satan. You know what I'm saying? So, just pray this prayer and mean it with all your heart, okay? You don't have to live in shame in what you did in the past. God wants you to nail that shame. If that's what it is, nail it to the cross. Whatever it is, just nail it to the cross. I don't know whatever happened to get a cross and then people write their problems down, fold it up. Put it and tack it on the cross. Nobody looks at it. It's, but you know, and 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 you, when you see that where you put it, you know that you nailed it to the cross, and it's it's no more yours. And that symbolizes you released it. And when you when it tries to come back on you, you say, well, "No, that was nailed on that cross." You need a visual that it's that that's the way it is, because a lot of people need that visual as well as the hearing and sometimes the, the working of doing things too. The three different ways of people learning. 
Amen. And that covers all of them, by the way, uh, fellow ministers, by the way, in, in, because they, you're, they're hearing, but they're interacting going there, right? And they're visualizing it. So you get all three learning right in all in one. Win-win situation for, for you guys, you know. Now, for those that are not understanding that the power of the cross is not the power, but the blood on the cross was the power that cleansed us from everything, okay? The blood of Yeshua that, that ran down on the cross was the power that brought us to newness, the shedding of his blood. His innocent blood, mind you, for us that weren't innocent at all. But we become innocent because of what he did for us. And we got to recognize, and that's that's part of the nature of healing the broken heart is, is, is seeing what he did for us, seeing what the Father went through, and how they both interact all throughout God's word, the, the, the God and spirit that they are. They love us. They are trying to interact in our lives. And your cousins, the angels, are trying to do their best, help along the way, and get you to remember to read your word sometimes when you forget. And, you know, have a little more patience with the guy at work that wants to, you know, mouth off. Or maybe it's the supervisor doing, well, you know, God, you can pray for that supervisor at work to reform his mouth or whatever it is. You know what? God is capable. His grace is efficient for you. Amen. And he's going to restore you. He's going to re restorate you every day. Heal our broken hearts, my friends. Mend our minds. Re restoration means just that. What the criminal elements, the foxes have done on the top. God wants to restore it, but he doesn't want to just bring us back to where we could have been, but he wants to make it even better. That's God's heart there in a nutshell. He could just put us where we would have been before they knocked all of us around, but he wants, in restoration, there's a greater after effect of his grace in it that he has for us. The hope of glory has for us. His grace is so great that when he restores us, we go way past where we would have been. Because that's God's grace of restoration for us, each of us. You got to believe it in your heart and receive it. And even if it doesn't happen the next second, no one's going to be right around the corner. The restoration and grace and in grace for us, healing our broken hearts. Amen. God bless. Now, just pray this prayer. If you're not born again and you're not spirit-filled, or maybe you're born again and not spirit-filled, pray this prayer. Dear God, Father, I love you. Thank you, Father, for, for uh, healing, healing me today and your salvation of, of my spirit, soul, and body. We thank you, Father, for doing it through Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua. For dying on the cross for me, resurrecting me on the third day with you symbolically, and sitting in heavenly places, but there with us because you're sovereign. Thank you, Shu, for what you did. Now I ask that your spirit um, go go on me and make me born uh, as as well as born again, as spirit filled with you, so I can know how to go and and know the the ways of God through your will. Show me the ways. Thank you, Yeshua, for what you've done and how you continuously help. And I thank you and praise you. Amen. Congratulations. Welcome to family, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Father, I pray for them right now. Thank you. I bless my little brothers and sisters and those that uh, recommitted to their lives to you as well as didn't know about the being spirit filled with you, Yeshua, that they are now. And we thank you for it. I, I thank you for great grace, great mercies on them. And I thank you that, that, that they're going to be the head and not the tail. Amen. They're going to think victory and not defeat. 
and they're going to get out of that defeat man into uh, the and the feeling of of going forth and getting that touchdown and winning the football and getting the, that ring on on their fingers. And I thank you, Father, and I praise you, Father, for all these things. And your eternal holiness, I praise you, Father. And I thank you, the Messiah, the Spirit of God, Yeshua, our El Shaddai. And I thank you in these last days, you're showing yourself as El Shaddai again, Yeshua. You're showing that you're the leader of leaders. And even in the mess that they have created, all these characters, you can restore us. And we thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. You sure. Amen. Congratulations. Blessings be with you. Keep in there. Get your get this get get the touchdown of life today. Amen. Get that home run. When the when 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 no defeatment. Except the devil. He's a defeated foe. Amen. God has said win the ball game today of life. Amen. God bless. Shalom.